morning, Robin. Good morning, Jason. Are we early? It's eight o'clock. No, normally, I don't know, I'll send Dan a text right now. The links have been acting weird. I wonder if that's why. Good morning, Nicole. Good morning. Morning, Nicole. Good morning. <laughs> hey, Jason, do you know who you would call? My mom and dad need grab bars installed in their shower. And we tried doing it ourselves, but the cement isn't holding and we need to like drill it into the tile. What, who would do that? Uh, I have no idea. I know that they had to do that um, up in Illinois from my uncle. Uh, and it was just kind of the hospice. They had somebody. So I don't know who, Dan might know somebody, I don't know. Ooh, that. I mean, you just get the candy bars and then have them installed. Who would install them? A handyman. A handyman? Yeah, I got a couple people for you. Thank you, my dad, for your recommendations. Do you have a good drywall person, Dan? I do. Let me get a minute. Put it in the chat. How many different colored uh, realtor shirts did you get? Yeah, those are cool. Gray, black, red, purple. Oh, here. All right, this is the drywall guy. That's the drywall guy. Cool. Thank you. Do you know anyone that does um, tile floor install? Yes, I do. I didn't know if Kane could do that as the handyman, but I thought maybe I should have a specialist. <laughs> I want a floor guy doing it. Thank you. Yeah, I don't like this whole password thing. I really don't. Whatever, whoever screwed up Zoom and made it where they had to have passwords and logins, and I don't like it. That's the first time I've ever seen that on our KWSA, uh, all of our Zoom meetings. Right? It's dumb. I don't like it at all. Thank you. I'm gonna send a text out. Does he say his name, Surreal? Joey Surreal. Surreal. He's been doing tile for 20 <clears throat> years. Met him at Lowe's when I worked there 20 years ago. And fantastic, fantastic craftsmanship. Do you know if tile is cracking, it's on a second story, if that's just because of the subfloor, like the people installed it down below where it's cement and it doesn't seem to be cracking, but upstairs, yeah, it's they, probably, got, 
the grout's coming out and the tile's cracking. And I know we bought cheap tiles for my daughter's house, but now I'm gonna have to have it redone. So he either did a really bad job or you think it's the subfloor? It's too like yeah, squishy. Because if they don't put the right underlayment down and tie it together, it flexes so much it'll start popping tiles or grout lines. Yeah, I'm sure he didn't do any of that. What's it called that you're supposed to put down? Other than like the mush itself, the grout. <laughs> What's it called? Underlayment. Underlayment? Yeah. Okay. Speaking of underlayment. Hello. Anybody else know how long the underlay is supposed to last on a tile roof? I think it's Dan, do you know how long an underlayment is supposed to last on a tile roof? Is it twenty five or thirty five? Twenty years. Twenty? Oh, we're not that's not good. Yeah, so your your roof length your roof lives are on a tile roof, it's twenty to twenty five years max, regardless if the tiles look good or not, because the plywood underneath. A shingle roof is between eight and eleven years with the plywood underneath, and then the a rolled roof is three to five. That's what you can kind of associate. So beautiful Malice, Mount Lemon. That is gorgeous, Dick. Thank you. It's a, it's a gorgeous home. Just listed it and getting a lot of calls on it. So, and it's really priced well. It's fantastic inside and uh, everything you can think of is in that house. Refrigerator, oh, microwave. Ever. I don't know how many people are having issues getting in here, so I just sent the text to everyone, everybody, getting in the Zoom. Good well, morning, everyone. Yeah, I couldn't get into PC class yesterday because of the same reason, asking for a password. And okay. I tried you one KWSA capitals, but I didn't do the lowercase KWSA. So. I'll figure, I'm trying to get it so we don't have to have a damn password, but I don't know how to get around that. You can always text me. Hi, Ezra. Morning. <laughs> so, is it just a new thing that we're adding the password? It's a Zoom thing. Zoom it's thing. The, okay. the platform itself updated their requirements. So, gotcha. And um, Dick, I love your beautiful Mount Lemon home. That's great. And then the Bisbee thing kind of confused me, but it's Mount Lemon. Oh well, yes, it's right. It's actually right at uh, right at Summer Haven but it's not lemon uh, mailing. Goodness, okay. Well, how is everyone this morning? Good. It is Tuesday, hey, it is purple shirt Tuesday. Oh. As you can see, I changed Ooh, black. Those of you who remembered purple shirt Tuesday, I love it. Dick, you're halfway there. Just gotta add some blue to it. It's a color joke, red shirt, halfway there. Use my you guys are flat this morning. Come on, wake up. <laughs> Jason's got his on. Good morning, Stephanie. Nobody said good morning to you. Yeah. Hello. We are continuing on with our series of awesomeness that's going on. About projections. Yeah, exactly. That's what I thought. Thanks, Ezra. You're so smart. Continuing forward, I want to discuss some listing stuff. We're going to do a little bit more listings today because we didn't really finish up where we were at on listings last week. So how about this one? 6% is too much. I'm not paying you 6%. I'm not paying that much. Anyone ever heard that when you're working with a, a seller in a potential listing? Oh, Big Dan, I remember you gave an example of this with like dollar bills and you took one away for each thing. Can you explain what that was? Well, yeah, it's the, it's the $100 <laughs> clothes. Sign, that's, that's the Seinfeld show. <laughs> $100 bills. There's 100 of them. Oh. And you take $100 bills and you take, you take okay, 3% for the buyer's agent. So each dollar is a percent, 3% for the seller's agent. 
you slide the rest to them. And you keep the rest. I went then it, on a, uh, it puts it into perspective. Listen, I went on a listing call with uh, Jesse over the weekend, and I love the way that he uh, approached it because the guy was like, well, can you lower your commission, blah, blah, blah. And uh, so Jesse kind of did the same thing of, okay, so you got 3% that's going to the other brokerage. Um, and then you got 1% that's going to my brokerage. And then I've got uh, a family. So 1% of that goes to, to my family. And then the other 1% goes to my marketing and advertising for this place. Are you saying that you want to take away from your marketing and advertising? I loved it that he was like, there's no way you're taking food off my family's table. So I like the way that he did his approach. Right. Who's got something else? This is interactive guys. This is a morning interaction. Like this is, this is where you, you start your day. You get the cobwebs of the night out. If you need to shake it out, shake it out. One, um, I'm sure this will be said, so I'm going to say it. Uh, I've heard and I love um, this. Um, if, if I'm going to be willing to negotiate um, right now on the, on the commission, is that what you should call it anyways? Uh, anyways, then, Maybe I won't be the best negotiator for you when it comes to you getting the, the best price for your house. Yeah, I wouldn't, I would never say that about yourself. It's usually when somebody says, well, this other agent's willing to take a lower commission. Well, that's great, Mr. And Mrs. Seller. If they're already willing to give away their money, how are they going to fight for yours? Oh, oh, I see. Like, God. Yeah, you don't ever want to say it about yourself. It's always in response to something else. Dick, what have you come across? Pretty much, I used what you just said there, you know, uh, but I also show the value. You know, maybe you didn't hear me write about the value that I bring to the table here. Chances are you're going to make more money on this sale than if you go with someone who's going to discount right off the bat because I'm going to be using a tremendous amount of marketing. And I show them samples. Show your value. I love it. We talked about value statements yesterday at Ignite, so it was helpful. Another I one. Love that. Remember your value. And sometimes I'm, so, I think it was Michelle Gerardini. How do you say her last name? Gerardini. Gerardini. Um, when she went through one of these kind of practices, she said that the person said um, they were just waiting for her to change her commission. And then she's like, well, I, you know, I don't do that. And then the, the other lady said, oh, okay, well, I was just asking for my husband. I was just kind of like checking, but she didn't really expect that. They just want a good answer. And like, if you remember your value, then it's easy to give that answer. Like, hey, this is all the stuff I'm doing. Like, okay. Um, how about this? Someone asks you, will you lower your commission? I want you to write this down. No, I appreciate you asking though. I want to try that. <laughs> Thank you, Josh Berkeley. No, I appreciate you asking though. Mm -hmm. wow. Got so that's, it's definitely when somebody asks in, if you look at the statistics on it, most people did not know that the commission was negotiable. Those who did know didn't ask. And those who did ask the, the agent just dropped trials like, no, okay. You could, okay, we'll, we'll, we'll reduce it down. I, I also use this and maybe you guys would, would like to use it as well. On all my, when, when I write up a listing agreement, I write in the remarks area that if I bring a buyer and Keller Williams, you know, gets both parts of the, of the deal and I get paid on that, then I'll drop my commission from six to 5%. And the chances of me finding out my own buyer are pretty good. And that, that sort of satisfies people. I'm not, you know, I, I've done it both ways. I've done it where people, you know, I, that I brought my own buyer, but when I had it, it's full 6%. But they feel at least that I'm trying to help them out. Yeah, that's up. absolutely. You're, you're trying to take care of them, make it a win-win. But you're also doing the work and servicing your need. I want you guys to remember your value. You're the one that went to real estate school. You're the one that paid to get your licensing. You're the one that's done all your continuing education. And you're the ones that's got to sit in these classes and talk to my bald face all the time. That's penance in itself. Get paid for it. This is, a, this is, this is your professional fee. That's why doctors, lawyers, 
you know, charge a high rate for what they're, you're not, you're not paying for in that moment. You're paying for the years of experience. Have I told you guys the, the story of the, the $10,000 bolt? So a quick fable, you know, a warehouse, what is it? One thing about a production line goes down middle of the night, costing thousands of dollars a minute that this line is down. So the, the floor supervisor calls up the repair company. Repair company says, hey, we can't get there. We're closed until the morning. Call this guy. He's 24-hour service mate. Calls that guy. The guy says, no problem. I'll be right there. Comes on down, walks the belt line, opens up a panel, tightens a bolt. Panel comes back up. The whole line starts moving again. The floor supervisor, wow, that was awesome. Thank you so much. What do I owe you? And the guy hands over an invoice for $10,001. The floor supervisor freaks out. He goes, what the hell? You were here for like a minute. You only spin, you only turn one bolt. This is bullshit. I'm not paying that much. And the guy goes, that's great. It's only $1 for me to turn that bolt. It's $10,000 for me to know which bolt to turn. <clears throat> so your knowledge and experience is where your value comes from. It's not the actual process and the engagement you're doing at that moment. It's the background. It's all the education. It's all the years. It's all the learning that has brought you to a place where you can answer that question and you can be that resource for good. Hopefully that helps you help seat your value better. When somebody says, why should I work with you? You know, I'm a professional. The things I know, I know what I know and I know what I don't know and the difference between the two. If I, if I know, I'll tell you. And if I don't know, I'll make sure I get the information so that you'll always have the right information. So that's one of the most common objections I've seen lately is the, now would you, would, we reduce your commission or this guy will do it for this much or that guy will do it for that much. So, so I love what Dick said, repoint your value and show them what you, I'm sorry, I must not have covered something clearly. Let me show you again. I love that. So it's called the re-demonstration, the resale going through and showing them again. So, all right. Anyone have any other colorful objections? Don't be afraid now. We're all friends here. I wouldn't do business with you if you were the last realtor in the world. Well, the good thing is, Dick, if I was the last realtor in the world, you wouldn't have to do business with me because I already sold your house. Okay. Good. Those are always, that's kind of a hard one to overcome, though. <laughs> I just, I want, I want to know what brings somebody to the point of actually saying that. Um, I don't know. Yeah. So if, if you got to make it funny. If someone's going to come at you with a super aggressive objection like that, because they're just trying to blow you out, co combating it with humor usually shuts it down. Mm -hmm. If I was the last realtor on earth, you would have to worry about it because I'd already sold your house. Um, and they just laugh. No, but I'm not here in Sierra Vista. They're setting up for a, a, a breakfast thingy, so it might be a little noisy. I apologize. Everyone else okay? I got half the screen is not no no cameras on. Like you guys are just sitting there hiding. Hey. I'm gonna send life alert over to Teresa's house. Get her shooken up because she is not smiling. Sorry. You guys doing okay? I mean, is your week is your week been that long already? Yeah, just getting ready. We don't want people I think they're getting that. getting ready for the for the big debate tonight. I think more people are watching that than they're going to be watching the Super Bowl. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be a whole lot funnier, that's for sure. Yeah. All right. Well, let's keep going. This, this is our morning startup. You know, what? where can I help you build your business? Where can the, the family around you help you develop and grow and be a better person? Not just a better agent, but a better person all around. Thank you. I don't really know how to ask this question, but, like, I know a lot of – I mean, I know you guys, you're a lot of realtors. And then like, even in my database, like let's say I have five other friends that are realtors and maybe that's the, the objection, you know? It's like, if I, if it's like, I don't know who to choose. And, and each one of everyone here could try to say like, choose me, choose me. Like, is there, is that ever a question? Like that, you know? Stephanie, I'm so glad you brought that up. And I appreciate that a lot of our mutual friends are realtors too. And they're a great second choice. Oh. Let me show you why I should be your first. Okay. 
it just like that. Okay, that's good. That is good. Never talk bad about competition. Never once put a smear mark out there. Oh, they're terrible. They suck. They're going to screw you over. No, because what that does is that shows that you're the type of person that is going to perpetrate negativity. You know what? Hey, that's a, that's a fantastic option. That's a great second choice. Let me show you why I should be your first. Okay. So, you guys think you can deliver that confidently? Come on, Teresa, give it a shot. I can. I see your your fear face. Let's do it. Teresa, I appreciate you showing, but I got, I've got a friend that's a realtor, and I think I'm going to use them. Well, that's awesome. However, uh, what if, you know, things don't mesh, or how are you going to feel if you have to fire your friend? You fire me, hey, no big deal. I'll get over it. But your friend, that could really hurt your, your relationship for a long time. If they're not doing their job, I'll fire them. Yeah, but, you know, I appreciate that, but at the same time, think about it. You know, could that really harm your relationship with them? When I'm going to look out for your best interest, you're my number one. Uh, all my clients are, and I just uh, I'd hate to see you go down that road and lose a good friend. Gotcha. It's a possibility. Okay, I like it. Who wants to go next? Robin. Robin, hey, I, I, I'm sorry. I appreciate your call, but I've, I've already got a friend that's a realtor. I'm probably just going to use them. Well, that's a great option. It's a perfect second choice, but I want to show you why I'm the right choice for you. There you go. Simple tie-in because it piques my interests. All right, someone else want to give it? Let's, let's get another objection out there. You can use that for buyers or sellers. You know, I already know an agent. Oh, hey, that's awesome. A friend that's in real estate is a great second choice. Let me show you why I should be your first. Well, I'd rather use a friend. Okay, fantastic. Congratulations, Robin. Now you have a new friend in real estate. You're so you got you to gotta be different. And being different is saying things the same way in a different cadence or saying the same type of thing to be able to help, you know, break the ice and make people smile. Like when I say things, I see you guys smile. It's because I'm triggering something you weren't expecting. When you get a phone call, answer the phone differently. Don't just say, hello, Keller Williams, this is Dan. How can I help you? You know, answer the phone. It's a wonderful day at Keller Williams, Southern Arizona. How can I help? Or it's a fantastic, oh, wow, that is strong. <coughs> oh, you disinfected my lungs. <laughs> I'm good, COVID gone. Oh, that was tough. You ever get that whiff of like chemical? It's just like awesome. All right, on to the next one. I know y'all got something. Come on. Anything. Now we're going to open the floor. We're going to go past sellers. Anything you've had a, an issue with or a hitch in your giddy up that you just couldn't get past or you want to know how to get past better? I want to do open house. Okay. Do an open house. Do you want help with the scripting an open house? Do you want help finding an open house? How can we help you? Uh, both of those. Okay. Well, first thing is, is you need to pull up your MLS and look at the office listings. So you click on your MLS, the top bar, and you can search office listings and then find an open house or find a, a house that's located you know, within Keller Williams. So there's a, or you can post on our Facebook page anyone need an open house being held i would love so the open office the, the office listing do i have to add that in the additional search or is, is no, it's, it's, hey annette we will do this in, together i'll show you how to walk through it thank you that way i can share my screen with you all right it's pretty simple I was, I was just doing my ethics course with TAR and um, one question that I had was like when, when they say that you can say you sold, basically my question is, okay, I'm a brand new realtor. How do I use the like office stats and say, you know, we've sold such and such and such and such. That makes and this, you ask what's important about, you know, are you, you know, sir, actually, I'm, I'm brand new at this. You'll be my first, second, third, fifth deal. 
But the good thing is, is I've actually got thousands of deals experience at my backing. My team here at Keller Williams is one of the top agencies in the city. Keller Williams itself is the number one brokerage in the world. And I am backed by the knowledge and expertise by all the agents there. We work collectively to help our clients out. Now, now just keep moving the conversation. Now, when would you like to, the listing to go live? When would you like us to, you know, get the photos done? When would you like me to have another agent come in and show you some information on staging? What, you know, just continue the conversation. An objection only becomes something of serious concern when it's brought up three times. Oh, I like that, Dan, because I got thrown off my game, <laughs> Stephanie, at a listing appointment because I was talking, because I'm, you know, a newer agent also so I was like my team you know has done this my team has done that and we're like yeah but what have you done so by saying hey I'm brand new you know I'm working hard at this but my team you know I, I love that damn and I should have I should have went with that instead of what I did so yeah what have you done well I've gotten myself to sit down in front of you and have a conversation about real estate that puts me ahead of 7,000 other realtors there you go I did tell him I drove an hour and 15 minutes to come down here. I do want this job. So, you know, I, I did express that. I said, I don't see anybody else lining up on your door. But anyway. Well, what have you done? I made the choice to align with Keller Williams Southern Arizona and get myself backed by the best in the industry. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. And I even, I had the same situation on a luxury build. Hey, Dan, we're going to go with somebody else. You guys remember the story a couple, weeks, a couple of months back. You know, we're going to go with somebody else that focuses in my neighborhood that sells houses at this price point. And, and I was like, you know, it's okay. I'm, I'm glad you guys made that decision for something that's going to work better for your family. I do ask that you, you know, think of me next time somebody you talk to is looking for real estate. They called me and gave me a referral because they felt bad. And because her, her, her niece, which is one of Ellen, she's on the call all the time. Her niece called her up and said, you do know what Dan does, right? Like, he doesn't sell houses in Green Valley it's because his name's not on the deals. All of his agents are. And she's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. I didn't know that. So I didn't do a good enough job of demonstrating the value I brought out to it. But that's just saying, you know, it's beyond the face value. It's not so much just the name on the sign as it what's backing it. Now, case in point, you look at like Josh Berkeley's team, massive influence, amazing backing. The customer service that follows, you know, the entire lineage of the career and everyone knows the name, right? So one of his agents, when they're on a call, you know, hey, I'm back by the Josh Berkeley team, Keller Road, Southern Arizona, so Sierra Vista and their market in Tucson. There's no questions asked. They know what it is is they built that relationship. You don't have that team per se because you're not on it, but you can back it against Keller Williams. And because of those big players, Josh Berkeley, Adam, or um, Aaron Wilson, the other big teams that have created the name for Keller Williams, you know, also doing things right at a massive level, you're backed by that knowledge. I guarantee if you had a problem and you walked in the office and Josh was there, you can ask him a question. He would help you walk through it. Thousands of deals, thousands of deals. He can walk you through it, right? Is that part of your team? So you are backed by the best in the industry. You're not going to take food out of his playbook. He's actually going to help build his, his branding out too, because it's just fortifying the company he aligns with. So, Knowing, knowing that stuff, it should help you navigate those conversations a little easier because someone's going to say, hey, you're, you're new. I've never seen your name before. I looked you up in Zillow. You've only done one deal. You're actually right. I have only done one deal. How's it going to feel for you to be my second? I'm going to dedicate my entire time and life to making sure that your, your house is sold at the top of my abilities. Well, you don't have the experience. Well, I do. I, I've aligned myself with the best company in, to do real estate here in Arizona as well as the number one company in the world. We've got you covered. Don't worry. And if you can't say that confidently, you need to say it over and over and over again till you believe it. Because if you can convey that conviction, others will soak it up. They'll be like, you're right. Just like, hey, will you reduce your commission? No. I appreciate you asking, though. No. All of you go back into the school days when somebody asked you out, you don't want to go out with them. You had no problem saying no. no. I, I couldn't I got, do that. <laughs> Dick, you and I, we had slim pickings. It's all right. We had to go with what we had to go with. But the other ones, I have to wash my hair. Oh, I've got, a, I've got a Bible study. Like all these things, like there was always a reason. There was always an excuse to go to. Guess what? Sellers do the exact same thing. 
It's when you break down that defense and you break down that objection wall, you're able to get in there and gain the agreement, get the business and create a relationship. And then it is your job to follow up, follow up, follow up. Fortunes were made in the follow up. Melissa, I know absolutely you cannot say no. We're working on that. It's actually important for you to be able to say no to people. So, well, awesome guys, it is 8.30. It's time for you guys to get prepped and set up for your, your lead generation. So however you build your businesses, go do so. And remember, if you're gonna hide out here, you're, not, you're gonna hide out in real estate. So make sure you put your faces on, get your game face, go to work, make some calls, write some postcards today. I challenge you all to write at least 10 today. Should be pretty easy, right? You got all the people in your database you haven't talked to in forever. And you don't want to pick up the phone, so pick up a pen. There's Ignite at nine, right? Ignite is at nine with Michelle Ripley. Woo! Woo Excited. <laughs> oh, it's Michelle Giardini? I'm sorry, it's Michelle Giardini. Wrong Michelle, but Ripley is teaching. Oh, okay. Today. <laughs> Michelle, okay. Michelle doesn't need her help then, if it's Giardini today. Awesome, guys. Well, enjoy your Purple Shirt Tuesdays. I love every one of you. Be good, be great. Dick? Good luck on selling that house in Mount Lemon. I want it. That's a beautiful home. And if you need somebody to watch it over the weekend, just let me know. Okay. <laughs> I'll take the dogs and just make sure it's safe. I'll, 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 I'll keep that in mind, Dan. Okay. In the next two days, I'll probably have somebody sitting in for me. I will be out of reach for the next two mornings. I have a coaching skills camp that I'm doing. So please jump in here, continue the conversations amongst yourselves. If I, I'm trying to get another coach to jump in from a different company, that'll help us out. But otherwise you, you know what to do. I, I believe in you, but I will be reachable by text. I just cannot answer my phone. So if you need me, text me. Other than that, have a great and beautiful day. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Thank you. Have a good morning. Bye. 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 Ezra. Done. Dan, Dan. Dan, are you still there? Thanks.